So here are some of my thoughts after reading your comments. Some of you have said that you need the front light and you need SD card slots. So that is a reason to go up to the Note F3 or the Note F3C. And actually the choice between the Note F3, the black and white, and this new one, it's only 20 quid really, so $20. If you need front lights, you're still in the, in the realms where you should be thinking Note Air Free. Some of you though, you want 300 pixels per inch and you want that in a device with front lights. So perhaps there will be a Note Air Free Plus later this year. I don't have any knowledge on that. It's not something that I've been told, but I think actually, if you're thinking, yeah, I wanted the 300 PPI and I wanted the front lights, I think maybe just help hold your horses a little bit longer because I don't think they would be averse to bringing out a Note F3 Plus. Might not have the fanfare that the Note F2 Plus had. Maybe they'll add that bigger battery in at that point as well, which would be nice. Might be bigger battery with BSR and Plus or give you the choice of BSR or not. I do think it's interesting that they haven't put BSR in either of these or they haven't mentioned BSR in either of these at all. Yeah, they, in fact, they say explicitly not a BSR device that can both of these. The Note F3C, which they're popping against it, is the the super refresh technology. I do think it's a really smart move. A lot of you said this to get in ahead of the A5X2 and the Remarkable 3, whenever that comes. Also to undercut them both on price. I think it's actually a real, I think it's a power move from books. And I think that if you want thin and light and you want Android, well, this is gonna be your choice, isn't it? So I really do think that they've hit a real sort of sweet spot, spot on the market really. Some people who were no, I don't really want books because I want the thinness and the lightness and the kind of the paper likeness of the Super Note or the Remarkable, but actually I would like quite like Android. Now they've got an option with books. So I think it's a real power move. I think it's going to be the clear choice for those of you. If you want thin, light, and you want Android <laughs> and you can put up without a front light, I think it's the one. Of course, though, there are going to be benefits of the other two as well. It's going to miss the modularity and the repairability of the Super Note and probably the ease of use that you get with the remarkable books. Yeah, sometimes you, you do get into these points where you're like, how does that work again? And it takes you away from that flow. So I get it about remarkable. You know, they're really trying to leave you in that kind of flow. It's not about being distraction free because you can do that with with no notifications, do not disturb mode, but, and you can use a books device however you want it to be. You can, you can make it fit in your workflow rather than having to adapt to a workflow. But what Remarkable and Supernote are is focused devices. They're really focused devices on one type of workflow. People have really lots of comments about, you know, where's the 13.3, the where's the Tab X Ultra C, or even a 12 inch could be quite nice. I'm currently, I'm daily driving and testing out the P12 mat, really enjoying that. That opens out into a really comfortable sort of, not laptop replacement, but sort of alternative. And the majority of the comments that I've been responding to, I've been firing back answers to your comments today, have been on this. It's actually the right size. And this is a 12 inch screen. And that is a better size for a laptop alternative than the 10.3 size is. So actually, I've got a lot of liking for this and I've got, I must say that um, actually, this is something that I think, uh, you know, a color, I know they do a Kaleido free panel in 12 inch, color this size could be quite nice. So I talked about this comparison quite a bit before in terms of the ultra as well. You can think about, and it just gives you that bit of extra room for sort of dual windows. And so a lot of today I was compiling the notes for this live stream whilst responding to your comments down here. I had two things open side by side and I was typing around this really nice keyboard. So actually, this could be cool. One issue with this, of course, even though it's a really nice looking matte screen, it does look really good. One issue with it is that I've been staring at an LCD all day and that has given me a bit of a headache. Not gonna lie to you. Other things that I noticed, people asked about the iPad Air versus it. Um, so the iPad Air 11 inch, which is a sort of similar size to this. Let's go ahead and have this on for a little work. The iPad Air 11 inch, which is a little bit bigger than this, is 462 grams uh, and it's 6.1 millimeter thickness. So this new thing is gonna be 4.6 millimeters. So it's 1.5 millimeter. The iPad Air is 1.5 millimeters thicker. That's the iPad Air 11, but it is all, almost 100 grams heavier, okay? 
so that's not inconsiderable. The iPad Pro 11 is 444 grams, okay, and with a 5.3 millimeter thickness. The iPad Pro 11 is 0.7 millimeters thicker. The remarkable is 0.1 millimeter thicker. Are you going to notice the difference between the remarkable and the Go? Of course not, not in use, but this is about marketing at this point, you know, and how are they selling it to people? Certainly, it is going to be a very nice thin device and it's going to be a lightweight device as well. That's it for my friends in the United States. That's it in inches and ounces there as well. So it's, it's going to be really nice and thin and that does give you that kind of sense a bit more like a paper notepad. You're not going to notice the difference, a tenth of a millimeter difference. But the thing is that books have stolen that world's finest moniker. They've, they've really, hit that same marketing point. It's paper-like, it's world's finished now. It's gonna be, it's gonna be good. It's not gonna totally mean that the Remarkable is suddenly way too thick or the iPad Pro is way too thick. Of course not, they're, they're thin and light devices as well. Now three different series of 10.3 inch and there's no new X size, no monitors coming out soon. And I too, I'm impatient for those other sizes of device. I think there's something about the supply chain of those perhaps. I think the 10.3 inch is probably the most popular and it's probably the most practical size of note-taking device right now for most people. And there are clear delineation between these ranges. And so I think because there's, you know, they're really popular, these 10.3s, there's more of them available. And I think finally the 300 DPI um, Carter 1200 screen, I think finally that must be the case that that's coming out of the factory in enough volume and whatever exclusivity Kindle had is over and finally companies are getting their hands on them. I do wonder, somebody made a point, perhaps what's happening is books have managed to get the next packet of them and that Supernote were maybe third in line. <laughs> maybe they were, you know, a little bit down the pecking order and maybe books have done a bit of a coup and managed to get them ahead of Supernote. And that might be one reason why we're seeing delays in the A5X2. Maybe that's total conjecture, but you're right. We've seen a lot of 10.3 and the other sizes could use a bit of love right now. And I think the Tab X is probably the biggest case of that. Now also a Go series, could we maybe see in the Go series, could we maybe see in the not too distant future, could we maybe see <laughs> a phone in here? Because Go means portability, it means mobile to me. Although they've still got the Palmer series here, maybe that is where the phone fits. Maybe we could see one later this year. I was also asked about the some of the terminology used in one of these devices here. If we go into the back into the Go series, back to the 10.3 and back to the specifications, people asked. What about this? What does this mean? Books Stylus Touch Plus Capacitive Touch. I think it is Books Stylus Touch Plus Capacitive Touch. So there's two inputs to that. Well, that is Books Stylus Touch is not books at all. It is Wacom EMR. That's what that means. Okay. And Capacitive Touch just means ordinary touch from your phone. So basically there's a little tiny capacitor there that when you touch any part of any screen, then that little pixel area that discharges to your finger and allows it to sense which particular pixel has been touched. So those two things, book size, touch and capacitive start, touch are exactly the same as everything we've got before, exactly the same thing on the specification for the Note Air 3. So no reason to worry there. You've got a touch layer basically, and you've got the Wacom EMR layer. And then also I was asked, what about this glass screen with flat cover lens? Again, that flat cover lens is what we all know as a paper feeling screen protector. And again, it's the same, exact same uh, written on the specifications for the Note Air 3, you'll see it looks exactly the same. You can see this is Kaleido Free with flat cover lens, and you can see books, books, stylus touch, plus capacitive touch, and it is going to be the same. Battery, it is going to be the same. Why do they, they always call it a lens. The front of the screen, they call it a lens rather than a just a glass panel or something like that, because what they are trying to do is, is make that kind of visual quality bespoke to the device. And really by having a, a really good lens, you bring up the pixels towards the surface um, of the screen more than anything. Uh, great book here, by the way, if you've ever read it. <laughs> 
and it's uh, it's free on Kindle Unlimited. It's a good point. Another positive is that Books gives you a bundle. You get a stylus case included with the purchase, and Mark and Ratter don't do that. Absolutely agreed. I'm excited. I, I think it's a good. I think it's a good looking device. I wasn't expecting this to be quite honest. I think when I saw when I started to see this kind of animation, I was like, oh yeah, I see what we've done here. Nice, strong move, books. Strong move. No news yet for the uh, features that you might have on the Tab X Ultra C Pro when it comes um, signature edition. <laughs> I think the prices of some people are really excited. Talking about yeah, the the um, you can see the little gap between the top surface and the bottom surface of the screen when you are writing. And all the premium like drawing tablets like the Huion's and the Sense Labs and the Wacom's, they've dealt with that by laminating the screen so, so there is no gap. But they don't have to have a front light because they're the backlit screens, transmissive screens. So that is what they do uh, to make sure that the, the touch of the pen is so perfectly exactly like that. And the one thing I wanted to say about using the Superno, which doesn't hasn't ever had a front light, that whilst using the Superno, and recently I've gone back to this as well, um, and even more recently I've been using the A6X2, and there have been very, very few times where I've sat there and thought, oh, I wish this had a front light. Probably not at all, but there have been plenty of times where I've sat there and thought, oh yeah, this looks like pen on paper. This looks like ink on paper. I don't even think there has been a single time where I've been using this and been thinking, I wish I had a front light, because you don't think that, you turn on a light. <laughs> Does that make sense? So you don't think, oh no, I can't see the paper. I wish the paper had a front light. It's something that you use because it's there, but you don't really miss it when it's gone. I hope that makes sense. The front light is something that you, it's great to have it, but you don't miss it when you don't have it particularly. So unless you know you are going to be needing to work in low light, sure, I did have a period where I worked on the, one of the little devices in bed and I was reading Kindle on half and, and notes on the other half and that was quite nice because I could have the light really low uh, and my wife could be sleeping and I could be finishing a little bit of thinking that I was doing on the notes. Sure, okay. I'm sure I could have made myself cosy somewhere else in the house with the light if I, if I needed to. Again, it's, it's just not wholly necessary. It's a nice to have. Yeah, thanks for that. Good. I read War and Peace <laughs> at night time when I was 18. I, it was great. I remember these like three days I picked up War and, War and Peace and just read it overnight for, for three nights in a row pretty much. I just lived a bit of a nocturnal life and consumed that book back when I was a student and didn't have uh, enough to do. Am I more excited for the 10.3 or the A5X2? I don't know. That is it. Uh, I, I'm, do you know, I'm more excited to like make the videos about them and really kind of, you know, get them and, and put them side by side and find out what is better because I, I just, I'm a very creative person and I really like making videos. We really like sitting and editing and, and everything like that. So yeah, I'm, I don't know. I'll, I'll come back to those. Yeah, that is the thing. Will I miss the BSR? Is, is a question. Will I miss the BSR? So this is a, the Note Air 3. It does not have BSR. Now, a lot of the time, the answer is no, I won't miss the BSR at all. So when I'm in the note-taking app, because e-ink has become very good at just refreshing this very small area, see what it did there, kind of then rasterized the, the image, it did, it did this anti-aliasing thing. So I made the mark, go back to the pen that I was using, shall I? And then it just sort of flashed that bit. It didn't have to flash the whole screen. So that's fine because you're only just doing that. You're only just updating those little bits. When you're in a book, let's go to the library. This is Helen Keller here. Again, you don't really notice it too much because it's good enough that it doesn't become a smeary kind of mess. And it's, I don't know what it's set on, but every sort of 10 pages or so, I might even have it as high as 30. You can maybe see, oh, there, it did a full refresh and it went. You can maybe see, if I go back to that page now, you can see now that it does have the ghosts of those lines, but that is no, not enough at all because the next line is going to be printed on exactly those points. Now, there's not enough ghosting there when I'm just reading words to worry me at all. I'm not sure what exact mode I'm in here. Uh, it's in the app's own settings. Uh, I'm in speed mode, right? And I could go to 
regal, they go to the very best look. It's just nice and crisp. Oh, so they didn't, wasn't going to do a refresh at all in regal, was it? And I've always got a little extra refresh if I ever need it just there. Um, to hand and this is the technology it will have it will have the x it will have the speed and all those things rather than the balanced and old trust but now if i go to a browser here's where i mainly notice it and i start to scroll you can see that it, it's in its sort of normal ish mode a okay, normal and look i scroll a bit it goes into a sort of x mode until i stop then it does a refresh. And I think that could get quite frustrating. So I tend to be, oh, I don't like that. I'll go into speed mode. And that is what I'll do. I'll, I'll live in the speed mode. And it's quite good. But you can see, gosh, that coming from a BSR device, that stuttering kind of scroll could be a bit painful. And now you can see it's a bit of a smeary mess. But it's okay. But it's just if you're used to using BSR, you will notice the difference. And I think the thing is as well, these kind of, you know, these comparative statements are, I, I use a lot of viewing devices. A lot of them have BSR. A lot of them have the equivalent in Big Me. And so the fact that that little smear down here hasn't just been cleared away, is kind of obvious to me. But if you're not used to that, and if you and if I if I live with this for a bit, and when I daily drove it, it didn't bother me at all. It's kind of all relative to what you're used to, really. And it does have a faster mode if you really want faster scrolling. But now you can see, really getting a bit of a mess underneath it. And you can see there in this fastest mode, it really the image starts to really fall apart. You lose all the contrast, and there it is. So will you miss the the uh, BSR? Probably not that much. Um, probably a little bit at first and then it will be all right. It depends on what you want to use it for because if I was using my apps all the time, and then you see I've got a few apps on here because this tends to be a oh, great reader, great note taker, I'll use it more for that. Then, you know, you think, oh, this app's a bit unusable because I have to either be in that X mode and it's a super smeary mess or I have to be in the normal mode or the speed mode and it's kind of refreshing all the time and it's slow to move around, and then you end up using your laptop or your other tablet. So it's difficult, isn't it? But did I miss having great battery life when I was using the BSR? Yes, I did. So let's weigh those two things up. Just decide what's going to annoy you the most. Is it going to be battery life? Is it going to be BSR? I think that's what I think about ghosting on these new devices. Uh, so I, I think they'll be absolutely fine. It'll be great, actually. I also have one more comment to make. I wonder about the longevity of the white plastic and the kind of greyish faux leather. How is that gonna look with age? The white plastic rarely looks brilliant after sort of three or four years. Uh, and the faux leather, is it gonna get a bit messy? I don't know. I will just draw your attention that we are running this without a front light right now. So if you've got questions about missing a front light, this is an older technology panel and it looks, in my opinion, it looks pretty glorious without a front light. It is well lit though, I've got the video lights on. It looks pretty darn good without the front lights. This is the Note Air 3. And yeah, <laughs> you can see it still looks really, really good. And I don't think, if any of you are owners of the Note Air 3, I do not think you should be thinking to yourself, God, what is going on? I, I wish I'd waited and, and got this other device. You still have a fabulous device here. And you have the benefits of things like the, the light as well.